What's up my viewers, I'm back for another Hexmanic Advanced tutorial. This one is basic number 13, all about HMA settings. This video will show you where to find and configure all of the settings in HMA. Instead of objectives per se, I'll categorize every setting. We'll start with the settings under the view menu, then the tools menu, and then alignment options for the hex content viewer, settings related to the find tool, and miscellaneous settings including some that aren't in the application itself. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more Hexmaniac Advanced videos. Before starting off, I'm actually going to click the wiki button as it will take me to HMA's GitHub page. Clicking the code button takes me to the main page, which contains the sidebar of HMA's releases. In that page, you can get the latest release, which is the version on top. Pick the version that best matches your operating system. There are newer, albeit experimental versions of Hexmanic Advance, and you can find them in the releases channel of our Discord, which will be linked in the description. As a reminder, you need .NET 6 desktop runtime in order for HMA to run, and OMG.NET 8 is in development already. Anyways, scroll down to where you see desktop runtime, and download and install whichever one matches your operating system. Alright, let's begin. The first group of settings that I want to take a look at are under the View menu of Hexmaniac Advance. I'm actually going to skip to Customize Theme first, as we don't need a ROM open for this setting. You can change the color of almost every piece of text in the software. If you memorize numeric values of particular colors, you can punch those in, or you can drag your mouse throughout the spectra of colors until you find the one that makes you go, we hit the jackpot. This brightness slider is related to the insides of text boxes and buttons. Going from one extreme to the other will cause these inside colors to pop out more, either to a very dark color or a very light color. Like with text, I can change the background of all dialogues in the same manner. Before I get crazy with these changes, I'm going to reset them with the reset button. For accent saturation and brightness, the accent colors HMA is referring to are the colorful circles that you see in the middle of the dialogue. Text that uses these colors in HMA can be made pale, vibrant, dim, and or bright. You can't completely change the colors of an individual accent. The hue shift slider only gives you a small bit of paint to mix with the existing color in your palette. Based on how you edited these settings, you'll see samples of what different types of text will look like in the application, with or without highlights. Same thing on the left side for text strings that use accent colors. The rest of the settings require me to have a file open. By default, these four settings are enabled. The matrix grid is a set of gray lines that separate the bytes from each other. Turning it off makes the hex content viewer look more like a Word document instead of a spreadsheet. The animate all scrolling option, when enabled, will cause the hex content viewer to bounce as you're scrolling up or down. Turning this option off will cause the hex content viewer to scroll without any transitions, which makes scrolling a tiny bit faster. For the other two settings that are enabled by default, I'll go to a table in the ROM. If you look towards the center of the screen, instead of hex addresses, you're seeing names of items. That's because use table entry headers is enabled. Unchecking it causes the column of hex addresses to show at all times. You may want the setting disabled if you need to pinpoint certain addresses of certain elements of a table, or you may want to keep it enabled so you can keep track of what Pokemon, item, etc. you're editing. After I scroll all the way down in the items table, you'll notice that no more bytes appear after the data of the last item. Likewise, no more bytes appear before the first item's data. Disabling the single table focus option will allow you to see the rest of the ROM. There's one more setting left of this major group. For that one, I'll have to open a second ROM. I picked the Emerald ROM that I have messed with in other tutorials. What I am going to do is showcase the last setting. Exclude pointer only changes from diffs. 
First, I'll do a quote unquote dry run and show the differences between the two ROMs with this option unchecked. So as you see here, HMA picked up on a lot of differences between the two Emerald ROMs. I'll direct your attention to some of the pointers that are different between ROMs. For instance, the addresses of the move names table, trainer classes table, and the moves table itself. If I look at the right cluster of bytes, you can see the aforementioned pointers over there too. Though the names of the pointers haven't changed, the reason why they show up in this diff is because the raw addresses are different. As you see here, the move names table occurs in two separate addresses when I look at the ROMs individually. Let's try comparing the ROMs again, but this time disabling pointer related differences. I closed the old difference tab and generated a new one. 30 seconds later, I encountered a completely different diff table. A lot of the pointers are gone. However, you'll still see some pointers if there are two in a row that are different from one ROM and another, or if the pointer is right next to a bunch of other bytes that got changed. If you were pointed a lot of things in your ROM hack, it might be helpful to have this setting checked when comparing your current ROM hack and a backup of it. Let's switch gears to the tools menu. These settings should go by pretty quickly. For this objective, I decided to go to the Pokemon table. To the left of the hex content viewer is a panel that offers another way for you to edit your game's data instead of only depending on the core hex editor. This panel can be in the form of a table tool, text tool, image tool, or code tool. You can toggle which tool is active within the tools menu, or you can click on the buttons on the left of your screen. Say you had the table tool selected. You can toggle it to make the entire panel disappear and make the hex content viewer a lot wider. Regardless of whichever tool was active, clicking Hide All Tools will once again make the left panel disappear, widening the hex content viewer. Next up is the hex converter. Note the keyboard shortcut that can be used to open it up. This will let you type in one number in base 16 and give you the base 10 conversion in real time and vice versa. I failed to consider recording this, but you can use addition and subtraction expressions in one of your inputs and the math will work out. Lastly, you can show the automation tool. It basically lets you type Python code, which is useful for making certain tasks in your ROM more efficient or making the software spit out a silly message. Our Discord has a channel that has segments of Python code that you can try out for yourself. Just be sure to back up your ROM in case anything goes wrong. In other news, here's my little silly message. To hide this automation tool, there's an X button at the top right you can click, or you can uncheck Show Automation Tool in the Tools menu. These next few settings control how the hex editor panel displays bytes. The four I will talk about are right here, to the right of the green play button. So the first one is the row width field. This determines how many bytes per column that are shown. For instance, the Pokemon names table is shown with a row width of 11 because Pokemon names are capped at 11 characters. The table's format ensures this limit. Similarly, going to the moves names table updates the row width to 13 because there are 13 bytes maximum per move name. I can manually change this field to any number between 4 and 256, though be mindful when doing this. While multiples of the original width lets you see two items per row, the data in the table can be harder to keep track of if supplied a suboptimal number. Like, look at this, the text wrap is so unreal. By default, row widths are 16. When going to an ordinary hex address, depending on how narrow the HMA window is, you might see 4 or 8 bytes per row. This auto button, called adjust width after go to, is the reason why the row width field changes at all between tables. With this setting enabled, going to the Pokemon names table decreased the row width value from 16 to 11. Disabling that setting means that going to another table will not adjust the hex content viewer accordingly, resulting in consequences you saw earlier in the video. 
So this button right here is enabled by default. It causes the cells in the hex content viewer to stretch pretty wide if the row width value is pretty low. Disabling it makes all the columns have their standard width, which can leave a lot of blank space towards the right side of the application. So this last option is disabled by default in modern HMA versions. It allows HMA to show data for multiple table items in each row. Stretching the hex content viewer allows this to happen without changing the row width value. I'll list one pro and one con of this setting on screen. Okay, let's move on. I was out for two weeks. Now there's a sweet new Hexmanic Advanced version. Anyways, you can change how the program searches for things. To refresh, you can click the magnifying glass or do Control F to show the search bar. And you can specify text, bytes, or other data, such as part of Birch's intro speech in Sapphire. So the first setting that can affect your search results is this one right here, search all files. It looks like cascading papers, which means that having multiple ROMs open, for example, Sapphire and Emerald, whatever you search for will have results from all of them. For example, I'm gonna search for the string, welcome to the world of. As you see on screen, the string appears in both ROMs. Look closely at the icons as I disable that setting. When they're toggled, their icons appear white. And when I disable them, they appear gray. Momentarily, I will do another search for the same thing, but with the setting disabled. Now you're only seeing the results from Pokemon Sapphire, as that tab was active prior to the second find operation. The other setting is called Match Exact Case, which makes the Find tool case sensitive when searching for text. Now there are no results for the search entry I provided because all vanilla instances of that phrase started with a capital W. Correcting it in the search bar will once again show the five search results. If you want to know where to find X amount of free space in your ROM, you can click the magnifier at the bottom left of the screen. In the prompt, you can specify how many free space bytes you want, and you'll be redirected to an address that contains that many bytes of free space with some wiggle room. We're almost done. Hang in there. We have a couple of miscellaneous settings to cover. I'll start things off by selecting a bunch of bytes. Pay attention to the length field over here. Letters come and go as the number of selected bytes increments by one. By default, this field uses the hexadecimal number system. If you right click this field, you can change the setting and make it display as base 10. Turning this setting on could be useful for keeping track of how many characters you have on a line of NPC text. Conversely, the vanilla game sim files, or older Poke Community tutorials, may want you to select a number of bytes but specified in base 16, so you may need to flip-flop. If I hold the control key and scroll, you'll notice that the hex content viewer can zoom in and out. The same can occur in the code tool as I navigate to a random battle script. To reset the zoom on the right panel, Head over to the View menu and click Reset Zoom. To reset the Code Tool Zoom, you'll have to close and reopen the ROM. So there are actually a couple more options. That cannot be changed within the application. You need to open this file in a text editor to access them. If you looked at the names of many of these settings, You'll recognize that they have been talked about in this video. However, I didn't cover map tutorials, copy limit, and maximum diff segments. So in the map editor, the pop-ups on the right are the map tutorials themselves, and they tell you what you can do with your keyboard and mouse to navigate the new map editor. In this long string of numbers here, each tutorial is represented by one of these bits. You can change the individual bits to 1 to signal that you don't need to look at this tutorial anymore. 
Oh, by the way, for best results, make sure that HMA is closed. Next up is the copy limit field. This is the maximum number of bytes you can copy from the hex content viewer at one time. I can increase this number if I want to. Thus, the next time I open Hexmanic Advance, I'll be able to copy more than 40,000 bytes. This setting determines the cutoff of how many search results to find when taking a difference of two ROMs. I lowered this value to 200 so that diffing between ROMs will let HMA continue responding. Now let's save changes and reopen HMA. Notice that in the map editor, the first tutorial you see is actually the ninth one. And by using the free space feature from earlier, you can see the new copy limit in action. Finally, I'm going to diff between Pokemon Sapphire and Ruby. That process was so much quicker than before. But if you look at the top, it only says 200 plus changes found. 1000 being the default is a good middle ground. But if you emphasize performance or detail one a lot more than the other, you are welcome to adjust it. This is the end of the video. These are all of HMA settings that you can customize to your liking. Be aware that these settings will reset when you get newer releases of HMA, so you may want to copy and paste the TomL file I showed earlier, and replace the one that comes with the new download. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video, and that you'll put this information to great use while you follow your pursuits of ROM hacking. Don't forget to join our Discord, and be on the lookout for more Hexmanic Advanced tutorials.